Welcome and thanks for joining us. My guest today is Casey Coleman. She's the Senior Vice President for Digital Transformation for Global Public Sector at Salesforce. Casey, great to have you here. Tom, so good to see you again. Thank you. And it's great speaking with you because you do have the federal workforce experience background in your own history, and now you're looking at it from the vendor side. And the whole issue today is that customer experience turned in on agencies so that their employees have a decent experience with all of the hybrid work, which we believe is going to pretty much be a permanent situation. So how would you describe the current state of government agencies, government organizations? Are they good with what they're offering their employees at this point? Well, Tom, this is such an important topic, and I, I feel it very personally. As you said, I I did spend 12 years in the federal government. I was with GSA at the time. And now from this seat, I can see that it's a challenging situation to provide a really good customer employee experience. Treating employees like customers remains very challenging for federal agencies. And there's a lot of good reasons for that that are, are challenging to overcome. They're dealing with systems that are um, old and hard to update and processes that are very um, highly regulated. But that being said, the government is competing for talent with the private sector and looking for the same kind of commercial skill sets that industry is. And so it's important to pay attention to these things, to be able to recruit and retain talent and to give employees the tools that they need to do the mission. So they're not focused on paperwork and administrative processes, but they're on the front lines helping fulfill the mission of their organization. So what are the challenges the government is facing? They're trying to compete for talent with the private sector. Is it strictly a technology issue or is it maybe a process issue and just what it looks like to be onboarded in a federal setting, which I imagine can be cumbersome depending on where you go? It can be. And part of the challenge is that there are so many different processes. If you look at just the recruiting and onboarding process, you need to do things like go through a background check, which is handled by one organization. If you're uh, in the interview process, then you need to go through that process, which is handled in a different place, usually in the Chico's organization. And then if you are going to get an offer, there's um, other checks that have to be performed. You have to ultimately get a badge and get um, equipment issued. And all of these are handled by different departments. And so part of the challenge is creating an integrated experience so that people know where they stand in the process and they don't find that they're lost in the system and ultimately go somewhere else because the other organization could respond faster. So it's about creating an integrated experience, giving people transparency, giving them the ability to know where they stand at any time and being responsive and communicative and meeting them where they are so that you're you're creating an engaging uh, experience and giving them a positive first impression of your organization. The implication of what you say is that the government has to integrate its own systems in the back end, because very often the Chico office and the hiring bureau might be disconnected or using disparate systems. And so not only can the prospective employee not find out what's going on with his or her application, but maybe different elements in the chain of the government don't even know what's going on. That That's true, Tom. That's a great point. And so you're talking about needing to connect systems with important data that has to be used in a cross-organizational way and connecting people so that they can collaborate across departmental boundaries. And the good news, though, is that this is not Require, does not require a three-year modernization project. This is not the kind of big bang thing that is never actually going to deliver results. We've seen organizations be very successful in starting small and taking one part of the process and collapsing those systems and creating a modern experience. Uh, we've worked with one military customer where they collapsed over a hundred systems now into their single platform for recruiting and onboarding. And now people in this organization can do things like uh, submit a fitness report on their mobile device where they you know, take a fitness test and record the results, can submit that with their phone. And in the past, that was a paper process that had to be filled out in the office and collected online. And just the ability to do things from a mobile device and do them once with information that doesn't have to be re-entered every single time 
it creates an amazingly positive experience and, and people can get back to the mission and away from the paperwork. So the impression of the government as employer then really begins before the government is your employer. Absolutely. It's, it begins when you start to look and, and consider different employers and people have choices. Uh, as you know, talented people can go different places. And so the government uh, needs to, and, and departments and agencies need to be thinking about this from the point of view of, from the outside in, from the point of the view of the person they're recruiting and thinking about the journey that they undergo not only through the recruiting and onboarding process, but then everyday services. Because if you are a a government employee, there's a lot of different processes you have to participate in. Things like the annual ethics training, uh, security awareness training, um, and and things like the combined federal campaign and participating in the uh, thrift savings plan, 401k. All of these are different important processes that you need to have easy access to self-service Uh, the ability to get to them when you are ready and to be able to work from a hybrid environment. So you can do them online, you can do them in person, the records are up to date and they're available anytime, anywhere. And what you've been discussing, you could call the connected employee experience and connected can take two forms. One, simply having integrated systems, as you described, so that all of these processes make sense and can be executed in a cogent way. But then there's also connected in the sense of this is a good place to be. They care about me and therefore I care about the work, that level of connectedness and maybe discuss how the two interplay. It's, it's, we've learned time and time again that engaged employees are effective and more effective and engaged employees deliver better mission outcomes and better citizen service. It, there's study after study has shown this, and this is one reason why the annual best places to work survey is so important. Uh, the one that's uh, issued by the Partnership for Public Service and, and OPM has surveys as well. And those scores really have a lot to say about how well agencies are taking care of their employees. And the ones that are delivering the most connected experience, uh, not only through systems and through processes, but also through leadership and culture. This is a multifaceted issue, and it really involves leadership from the top down to set the tone, to create an expectation of of employee engagement, and then to deliver on it through the systems and through the personnel and procedures that support it. Because sometimes people walk into an organization, whether public or private, and even if they had a good experience with being hired and onboarding, they get there and, oh my gosh, this technology is outdated. The carpets are dirty, whatever the case might be. Everybody's nasty. Whatever the case might be, the issue is how do you maybe match what they encounter once they arrive with what it is they encountered on the way to arriving? And that integration then kind of works horizontally too. That's right. And I I used to joke when I was in the government that the system should be doing the work for us, but too often we are doing the work for them with feeding them data and moving information from one to another. So it really ought to be the reverse that the systems that we use make our lives and our work easier and better. And we've been able to help customers in the government do that very thing. And some of it relates to the same experience that I've had here at Salesforce. Uh, all of the, everything we have is integrated. There's not multiple logins and multiple passwords for different systems. It's all available in a self-service portal. So when I want to log in, for example, to um, log the volunteer time that I've done with a local dog shelter, which counts toward how much volunteer time I'm, I'm accruing for, uh, for this year, it's very easy to do. And I can do it from my, from my mobile phone. Yeah, sure. In fact, you probably remember there are agencies, you know, when you were GSA, these kinds of topics came to you then, and I'm sure they come to you at Salesforce. There are software stacks in some agencies where literally people log on and then go get coffee for 20 minutes before everything loads and they're able to work. So there's a big technical component too, isn't there, to having that connected experience and saying, wow, this is where I want to be. Oh, absolutely. The the connected experience is is within grasp. I just want to continue to make that point that it's not only the kind of thing that a, a 
modern technology company can do, but, but departments and agencies and organizations can do the same because with digital cloud services platforms like Salesforce, the, you can start small, you can solve a problem quickly with an agile approach. Uh, you can then move beyond that. Uh, for example, when, when COVID broke out, um, one of our uh, customers who's a, a cabinet agency needed to very quickly start to issue um, shift tracking to their employees so they could ultimately know who had been involved if there was a uh, exposure to COVID. So they, within a few days, were able to launch an application on our platform so people could log their shifts and they could then start to analyze the data to see who had been on a certain shift in a certain location when there had been an exposure. And from then, be able to notify people so that they could uh, limit the exposure. And being able to do that in a matter of, of hours or days is now kind of the new normal. So using low-code platforms with configuration, it clicks, not code, and being able to have a single platform that you can use over and over again for different applications so it's already integrated. Uh, these are the kind of capabilities that are available out of the box now that really contribute to a materially better employee experience. All right. Great example. On that note, we'll take a short break. I'm Tom Temin. You're listening to this discussion, Federal Insights Employee Experience, sponsored by Salesforce here on federalnewsnetwork.com. 